I want to welcome you to GCI Word Bite, and this is from the pastor's desk. And today we are going to look at God as the origin of everything that we see. And uh, we are going to base our, our study from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, from verse number 1 to verse number 4. And before I read the Bible, I just want to say to us that creation is not in conflict with, faith, uh, with, with science. And actually, today we are going to look at God as the creator. So the word of God in Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to verse number 5, I will read, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The, now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And he separated light from the darkness. God called the, the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening. And there was morning the first day. So just looking at that particular scripture, going to the first day of creation, we see the, the glory of God. We see the power of God. We see the awesome nature of God. We see a God who is more than able to do things that no man can do. In fact, when God began the beginnings, there was no man to help him. There was nothing that could help him. Recently, I visited a construction site and I saw the way men would hold onto this side and hold onto the other side and use objects and machines and all that to do their, their construction. Especially when it comes to excavation, you find that they need a lot of people, they need a lot of machines to excavate. And it, it sent me back to the book of Genesis and I imagined the kind of God that we have subscribed to. You know, the kind of God that we believe in. He's such a powerful God who does not rely on man's help. To, to enable him to do anything. He did all this creation by himself. Actually, friends, everything that we see in the creation, be it a plant, be it an animal, be it a human being, be it the soil, the light that we see, it has been created in the wisdom of God. He is the God of all wisdom. He's the author of all wisdom. And the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This tells me, just the, the first part of this scripture, in the beginning, God. It tells me that there is nothing that is in existence without God. Even our own lives, we can never exist without God. He's the author of everything that we see. Uh, we see with our eyes. So in the beginning, God created. The Hebrew word, therefore, created is bara, which means he created out of nothing. There was nothing that he used as a, you know, a, as a material for, for the creation of heaven and earth. It was just from nothing, but by his wisdom. So he created the heavens and the earth. And verse number two uh, says that now the earth was formless and empty. That earth that God created, after he created it, he looked at it and he saw nothingness and emptiness in it. And he continues to explain and says, darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, meaning that the earth that God created the heavens that God created. You know, he looked at everything. There was nothing. Uh, you know, there was darkness that really extended to the depths. And even with that darkness, it never stopped the Spirit of God from functioning. The Spirit of God was hovering because he was part of the creation. And let me just mention that this creation that we are talking about, and when we talk about this God who was there in the beginning, it is God in three forms. God the Father was involved in creation. God the Son was involved in creation. And God the Holy Spirit was involved in creation. And what I am telling us, uh, you know, my friends, is that the whole Trinity 
was involved in creation. And from nothingness of whatever it is that we think of, God created and brought everything to existence. So the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, you know, and God had already made that creation to happen. Verse number three talks about um, what God said. And this is just the beauty of what we are talking about today. I just want to invite you to see the awesome nature of God, the glory of God. And so that even as you trust in this God, you are not trusting God, uh, you know, a God that is not reliable, a God that is not dependable, a God that really would wonder what to do with your life. If he can create the heaven and the earth, out of nothing, he can create anything and everything in our lives. It doesn't matter the void that is there in our lives. And verse number three says, and God said, I loved that with the whole of my heart because the voice of God is the action of God. It is the power of God. Whatever he says, he does because he is God. And God said, you know, looking back to verse number two, where the author tells us that darkness was over the face or the surface of the deep. Then God in verse number three says, let there be light. He is the creator of the light. And there was light. Whatever it is that God said, it came to be. It came to pass. And I want to stand here and tell us that there is no conflict between science and Christianity or with creation. God is in it. The only thing that we fight about, the only thing that we would argue about, the only thing that we will discredit is a worldview that explains things without the creator because there is nothing that ever existed without the creator. So God said, let there be light and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And he separated the light from the darkness. I want us to go back again. That in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was formless and empty and darkness was, was over the surface of the deep. So he has created things. And I believe he created even darkness itself. And again, he creates light to light up the darkness that existed at that particular time of creation. So he said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good and separated the light from the darkness. I am amazed at a God who can even separate the darkness from the light. I know many times we can even try to do that by entering into a, into a room like this one. And just because there's darkness, it is at night, you switch, off, you switch on a switch and then there's light. That is not the kind of creation that I am talking about. That is something that is helped by God. But in the beginning, God was able without a switch without even current flowing in and flowing out, God himself was able to put a separation between light and darkness. And, you know, God in verse number five says, God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. So this creation story, why am I bringing it to you? And mark you, we will continue with it and just see the awesome nature of our God and see how God is so powerful. Today we are talking about the creation story because people have reached a place of uh, intelligence and we are feeling like we have the wisdom to put God aside and to work out our lives without him. There is any you know there is no time that we can separate God from the things that we see today because nothing existed without him. Any world view, any wisdom of any nature that puts God on the side is not true wisdom. And there is no blessing in it. Because even you who feels that uh, probably you have some wisdom, even me, if I feel I have some sort of wisdom and I can put something into existence, I should just repent. Because myself, you know, 
even my existence, it has taken the hand of God. He took time to create me. And we will come to that when we come to the last day of creation. We'll see how God created man. So there is no wisdom, and I just want to call your attention to the place of honoring God for who he is without feeling that we have any knowledge of our own. That mind that we have, that wisdom that we think we have, even those words that we speak, those hands that work with the materials that God put into existence, it comes from God himself. By ourselves, we are not able to do anything. This light that we walk in and we think it is just the ordinary, it took the hand of God to put into creation, to put into existence and into being. So I am calling the, the, the world to the attention that there is a God in heaven. There is no wisdom that beats his wisdom. There is no human who is wiser than God. We have tried to do things. We have tried even to create human beings, but there is no wisdom that can put a man into existence. Actually, when we get to uh, the day number uh, number six, we will see how God created man. And, you know, from materials that he had already created, and there was no life in that man until God breathed his life into that human being. So I just want to say that we need to get back to the beginnings. We need to get back to the creation story and see the power of God because people are forgetting about God. People are running their lives without God and people are thinking that they are complete without God. Let's pay attention to the God of creation. Let's pay attention to the God who has put our, our bodies into existence and has given us this special life that we have today. And God is going to richly bless us. I just want to put an application to this, uh, this creation story. Maybe you're looking at your life and you're seeing total darkness, you know, darkness extending even to the depths of your life, to the depths of your existence. I want to call your attention to the God of creation because he can bring light to your darkness. He can call it out. In verse number three, God said, let there be light. And you who has an issue in your life that looks like total darkness, engage this God that we are talking about, the God of the scriptures, and he's going to speak light to your situation, and you will see the beauty of God's creation in your life. You will see the, the beauty of involving God in your life, and you shall praise him. So um, I just want us to think about that and just know that God is the origin of everything that we see. He is the creator and he is distinct from the creation. There is no way out you will compare God to any other thing that has been created. He is the creator. He is distinct from the creation. He is eternal and he is in control of the world that he has created. Would you love Jesus? Would you love God? Would you love the Holy Spirit? Because the three were involved in creation and they are not three gods it's just god in three persons because of the function of 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 what they do you know and this is the person and this is the god i am pointing you to may he bless you may he bless everything that you do may the lord jesus be with you may the lord jesus enrich you and the god, god our creator may he be with you to create everything in your life that you need. God richly bless you. My name is Pastor Joyce.